The Mooney Flomax HP, or High Pressure Regulator from Baker Hughes, is a high-capacity pilot-operated pressure-reducing regulator that is rated for applications in natural gas, air, or other gas service, with pressure up to ANSI 600 class, 1,480 pounds per square inch, or 102 bars. It features top entry design for ease of maintenance, meaning the regulator body may remain bolted into the line while the actuator and internal components are removed for maintenance. This video will demonstrate the process for disassembling the Flomax HP regulator for maintenance, replacing the internal soft goods, and reassembling the Flomax HP regulator for return to service. After reviewing this video, you should be able to identify the components of the Flomax HP regulator, including soft goods and other components that should be replaced as part of a regular maintenance schedule. Recognize the tools required to disassemble and reassemble the Flomax HP regulator, and understand the steps in the process to disassemble the Flomax HP regulator, replace applicable spare parts, and reassemble the Flomax HP regulator for return to service. The main external components of the Flomax HP regulator include the upper and lower diaphragm housings, the adapter housing, and the regulator body. The tools required to disassemble and reassemble the Flomax HP regulator vary depending on the size of the regulator. Please consult the Installation, Operation, and Maintenance, or IOM manual for a list of the tools applicable to each valve size. Prior to conducting any maintenance operations on the Flomax HP regulator, isolate the regulator from the pipeline pressure and purge any remaining pressure in the line or in the regulator. Disconnect the loading and sense tubing from the actuator. The Series 22 pilot block can remain attached to the adapter housing and does not need to be removed for this procedure. For valves with the optional travel indicator, remove the travel indicator cover. Disconnect the travel indicator shaft from the stem by pressing down on the shaft and rotating in a clockwise direction. Once disconnected, the travel indicator stem should be free to move up and down. Using an appropriate socket wrench, remove all the cap screws holding the upper actuator housing to the lower actuator housing. Using proper lifting points, lift the upper actuator housing from the unit. Note that for smaller valves, it may be possible to lift the upper actuator housing and other components of the Flomax HP regulator by hand. For larger valves, other lifting techniques may be required such as team lifting or lifting using a hoist or crane. Refer to the table of component weights in the IOM manual and use a lifting method appropriate for the valve size and component weight. Remove the spring and travel indicator shoe. The travel indicator shoe is threaded onto the stem and can be removed using an appropriate open-end wrench. Remove the upper cotter pin. While using the wrench flats on the top of the stem to hold the stem in place, unscrew the upper castle nut from the stem using an appropriate open-end wrench. Remove the upper diaphragm support plate. Remove the washer. Inspect the O-ring inside the upper diaphragm support plate for blistering, nicks, or other signs of wear or damage. If any wear or damage is detected, the internal O-ring should be replaced. If no signs of wear or damage are visible, the O-ring may be left in place and reused. Remove the diaphragm and inspect for any bubbles, cracking, or other signs of wear or damage. Replace the diaphragm if any signs of wear or damage are visible. Remove the lower diaphragm support plate. If the diaphragm support plate cannot be freely lifted out of the body, the washer and castellated nut may be reinstalled to use as a lifting aid. Inspect the O-ring inside the lower diaphragm support plate for blistering, nicks, or other signs of wear or damage, and replace if necessary. Remove the four cap screws holding the seal pack cover plate in place.
Once the four cap screws are removed, the seal pack may be removed as a complete unit by rotating the cover plate to uncover the threaded jack screw holes located on either side of the seal pack assembly, threading two of the seal pack cap screws into the holes, and tightening the screws to lift the seal pack out of the lower actuator housing. It's recommended that the seal pack be replaced as a complete unit rather than attempting to repair or replace any individual components of the seal pack assembly. Remove the lower diaphragm housing. Attach lift eyes to the two threaded holes in the housing and lift vertically. The lift eyes from the upper actuator cover may be used. If necessary, two cover bolts may be inserted into threaded holes on opposite sides of the housing. Tightening these screws will assist in lifting the lower diaphragm housing away from the adapter housing. Inspect the environmental O-ring for signs of wear or damage and replace if necessary. Inspect the O-ring in the adapter housing for any signs of wear or damage and replace if necessary. Remove the plug assembly by lifting the stem. To assist in removal, the upper nut and washer may be threaded onto the top of the shaft to serve as a gripping point. The plug should be pulled upward rapidly to remove it from the housing. It's possible for the plug to get stuck on a lip during this process. To fix this, push back down before pulling up quickly and firmly to dislodge it. A click will be felt when the plug seal transitions from the cage to the adapter housing. To rebuild the plug assembly, remove the cotter pin and loosen the castle nut. Once the castle nut is loosened, the plug and castle nut may be removed from the stem. Use caution when removing the nuts and plug to avoid damaging the sealing surface on the stem. Remove the seat insert and inspect it for signs of wear or damage. Replace the seat insert as needed. Remove the plug seals. Replace the seat insert with the stepped face pointing toward the plug skirt. Install the plug onto the stem assembly. Install the castle nut and tighten as per the table in the IOM manual. Use the wrench flats to hold the part and prevent the assembly from turning. Once the castle nut has been tightened to the minimum torque shown in the manual, Continue to tighten until the castellated nut aligns with the shaft hole. Install the cotter pin. And deform at least 90 degrees for proper locking. Install the plug seals. Install the lower scarf cut backup ring with the angled face pointing upward toward the top of the plug. Install the elastomer ring so that it seats inside the angled face of the backup ring. Install the upper scarf cut backup ring with the angled face seated against the O-ring. If the lower valve is to be rebuilt, Set aside the plug assembly for reinstallation after rebuilding the lower valve. Please note that to proceed further, the adapter housing will need to be removed. This is only necessary if the cage and seat ring need to be inspected and replaced. If the adapter housing is removed, the upper and lower crush gaskets must be replaced. It's not possible to reuse the crush gaskets once the adapter housing is removed. At this point, it's essential to remove the pilot supply tubing. It's not necessary to remove the pilot, 
However, you may prefer to remove it for easier navigation around the unit. To remove the adapter housing, insert lifting lugs provided with the valve into the provided lifting holes. Remove the adapter housing cap screws and lift the adapter housing using appropriate lifting equipment and technique. In some cases, the cage may stick to the adapter housing as it is removed. If this occurs, lightly pry the cage loose with a brass or plastic tool. Remove the upper crush gasket and lift the cage from the body. Clean the cage and inspect it for any sign of abrasive wear or damage. Remove the seat ring and lower crush gasket. Inspect the seat ring for any sign of abrasive wear or damage. Replace if necessary. Due to the close fit between the seat ring and the cage, it may be necessary to pry the seat ring from the cage using a brass or plastic tool. This completes the process of disassembling the Flomax HP regulator. To reassemble the Flomax HP regulator, first insert a new lower crush gasket. Insert the seat ring with the conical sealing surface facing up. Insert the cage with the stepped end facing upward. And insert the upper crush gasket. Apply a light coat of anti-seizing agent to the top of the cage where it intersects with the adapter housing. Position the adapter housing in place on top of the upper crush gasket with the pilot bracket mounting holes oriented perpendicular to the pipeline. and install the cap screws. Torque the cap screws to the proper setting in an even crisscross pattern. Torque should be applied in intervals of one third of the final torque, two thirds of the final torque, and finally, each screw should be tightened to the full torque setting shown in the IOM manual for the applicable size of Flomax HP regulator. Note that failure to tighten the bolts in the proper sequence may result in external or internal leaks. Apply a light coating of suitable O-ring lubricant to the adapter housing O-ring and install it on the adapter housing. Once the adapter housing is reinstalled, or if the adapter housing was not removed, reassembling the Flomax HP regulator may be resumed from this point. Apply a suitable O-ring lubricant to the plug seals, and install the plug assembly into the cage. The plug will stick slightly at the point where it transitions from the adapter housing to the cage. Keep pushing with a slight circular motion to help the plug pass over the transition from the adapter to the cage. Apply a suitable O-ring lubricant to the environmental seal O-ring and install it onto the adapter housing. The lubricant will help the O-ring remain properly in place during installation. Install the lower diaphragm housing. The loading port of the lower diaphragm housing should be oriented downstream. Install the seal pack housing by sliding the seal pack assembly onto the stem and then sliding it onto the lower diaphragm housing. Install the seal pack cover. Note that the stem has a taper, which allows for easy installation of the stem seals. Tighten the seal pack cap screws to the torque settings specified in the IOM manual for the applicable Flomax HP regulator size. To prevent the housing from rotating while tightening the seal pack cap screws, 
insert a cover bolt into one of the threaded holes in the adapter housing. Install the lower diaphragm support plate with the raised boss facing toward the seal pack assembly. Install the diaphragm with the convex side facing toward the seal pack assembly. Press the diaphragm bead into the sealing groove around the outside diameter of the diaphragm. Install the diaphragm support plate with the concentric grooves facing toward the diaphragm. Slide the washer and castle nut onto the stem shaft and engage the threads. The castle nut may initially be tightened by hand. Prior to final tightening, place a separate wrench on the stem wrench flats to prevent rotation while tightening the castle nut. Begin by tightening to the minimum required torque shown in the manual and then continue to tighten until the castellated nut aligns with the shaft hole for proper insertion of the cotter pin. Insert the cotter pin, and bend the ends more than 90 degrees to maintain proper locking action and assure that the cotter pin does not interfere with the main spring. Thread the travel indicator shoe onto the stem and tighten while holding the stem using a wrench across the provided flats to prevent the stem from rotating. Set and center the spring on the upper diaphragm support plate. Verify that the diaphragm bead is sitting in the groove of the lower actuator housing. Lower the upper actuator housing onto the assembly, using proper lifting equipment as needed. The upper actuator housing should be installed with one sense port oriented opposite the pilot and the other sense port pointing downstream. Install the cap screws and tighten to the recommended torque specification shown in the IOM manual. Re-engage the travel indicator. By pressing down on the indicator stem, and turning in a counterclockwise direction. Once engaged, the travel indicator should be locked to the stem and should not be loose to move up or down. If the pilot block was removed to facilitate access to the body components, reinstall it using the bracket and mounting holes in the body. Install the cap on the travel indicator and reconnect the sense, loading, and inlet tubing. Pressure test the assembly for leaks before returning the regulator to service. This completes the process of disassembling and reassembling the Flomax HP regulator. For additional details, including downloading the IOM manual or other literature, or to contact a local Baker Hughes distributor, please visit our website at valves.bakerhughes.com.